Yeah, no, it was great. Um, I've you know probably come on a bit further than I thought maybe in the last year, um, but no, it's it's been great. Um, it, it's a big, it's, it's it's a bit of a testament to the people who've got me here rather than me. And there's a lot of clubs, a lot of people, um, you know, my family who've been a massive support. So them, the likes of uh, Lansdowne and Trinity, my AAL clubs, and then like the Clongos as well. So yeah, it's been a good year and um, hopefully we can keep it going now throughout this season. You're very modest there, but on personal level, you must be delighted with the, with the nomination. Yeah, no, it is, it is good to get a bit of recognition for, for your achievements or how you've gone throughout the season. Um, it's not the awards I'm interested in as much so, it's the, it's the team ones I'm interested in, but it is, uh, it is good to also get a bit of praise, I suppose. You want to talk about the team, what would a clean sweep this weekend mean to this Ireland team, three wins in three? Yeah, it's massive because I'd say, we, if we're all honest, we, we took a step back last, or last week against Fiji and I think you know, we've been talking about making sure that we perform uh, better each time we play. Um, so. We'll be aiming to, to step it up from the performance we put in against South Africa. Um, you know, Australia probably they offer a, a different threat completely than South Africa. They they're quite expansive with their play. Um, lots of very good athletes, but they you know they they move the ball quite quite well. So it'll be a big challenge. They're also a big physical team that we also have to be able to front up to like we did against South Africa. But um, a good challenge. But we'll be focused on ourselves, getting a better performance. So you want an improvement on the South Africa performance this weekend? Yeah, that is our main goal. I think. Uh, definitely is we've been talking about bigger performance in South Africa. Kevin, just on the Fiji performance, what have you been able to identify that went wrong for you? Quite a frustrating game in how we started. First of all, them scoring straight away. Uh, we got quite narrow off our kick chase and we obviously knew their main threat was their ability to spread the ball. Um, incredible athletes, one-on-one -on -one ability and then the ability to offload as well. So that was disappointing the way we started. Um, I think what was good from the game was that we were, it was obviously a new bunch and quite a few, three new caps obviously and the way we were able to stay in the moment and um, there was frustration in that we were very dominant and in their 22 for large periods and didn't convert. Uh, I don't know how many moles we had that we got going forward and were either held up or they got through. Um, so there was that frustration but at the same time we were next moment and next job focused which was a positive. Um, like Shino said, we had the same focus last week about improving. Didn't matter who was playing, we wanted a better team performance. So that's the same focus now this week, trying to evolve. The game is very stuck to start. Is there a blueprint there for Australia to, to stop Ireland? If it's South Africa did it to a lesser extent, where the game becomes very static, Ireland struggled getting to their rhythm. Yeah, yeah, we definitely want to play with tempo. Um, not sure if it was intentional or not. There was obviously a lot of unforced errors and knock-ons as well, some that's in our control, so we'll try and deal with that as best we can. Just on a wider point, the nominations obviously for Josh and, and Johnny, for the senior player as well, and the two boys, that must be a huge fill up to the wider group. Definitely, it's a great environment we've got here. Um, we all love being here, we love the way we're playing. Um, it's a good, good group to be involved in. Those guys obviously have been standouts for us over the last 12 months. Um, so yeah, it's an exciting team to be a part of. Dan, it's just over a year since you made your debut coming on against Japan. Does it feel longer than that since you've been around this Ireland squad? Uh, probably not. You know, the last year has gone so quickly. Um, I've enjoyed every second of it, and you know, when I when I'm looking back over the last year, the amount of things, you know, that I used to be sort of playing at AIL week in week out not so long ago, and and to be here at the top international rugby. It, it's exactly how I dreamed as a kid that this is what this is what it'd be like. So uh, yeah, no, it's it's been a great year, and I can't wait to, to keep going and making sure that I put my best foot forward. And is the growth happening quicker than you might imagine? Uh, yeah, uh, a little bit, but at the same time, I knew I was always. I, I guess I just found a bit of confidence in myself and my ability, and and you know, back double down on my strengths. Um, I think you can spend a lot of time trying to trying to fix the things that maybe you're not so good at, but if if you really focus on the things you're good at and make sure make sure that they become maybe a world class thing, you, you know you you might get your foot in the door. So um, yeah, I think that's probably the main thing: the confidence uh, in my game and and pro probably injury free as well, which has also been a huge help uh, the last two years. And what's Andy like as a coach? Uh, yeah, great. You know, he's the environment he's created um, throughout the whole squad, the backroom staff is is 
something I'm probably not used to. I haven't really seen it like that. Um, but you know, the way he's able to switch from being your mate uh, to being your coach and telling you exactly what, how it is um, is something we all enjoy. And, and you know, the environment around camp, the way we enjoy our time off, um, you know, it, it's a great balance. I think everyone's enjoying it. Yeah, the environment is something that most of you have always said in these press conferences. Caitlin, for you, I think it's nearly three years since you made your debut. What was the biggest change, would you say, from my major debut to being a part of this squad now? What differences are there in the Irish squad? Um, my debut was Andy's first game, so it's kind of it was the start of the the building of the environment and the building of this new group. Um, there's a few new faces, obviously Paulie's come in since then, um, but from the start it was kind of like Sheena said there, the balance between being on and preparing really well and helping each other to prepare well, but then when we're off enjoying each other's company, getting to know each other on a deeper level, um, the balance between those has been a focus from the start, and I think. In a way, the COVID period probably helped with that just because we were forced to spend more time with each other. Um, so we got to know each other better and uh, those relationships grew, which obviously means better crack off the pitch, but also probably helps on it or definitely helps on it as well. Can we just, can we just ask you, uh, this is the first time to my knowledge that there's been proper, um, both the national sides are here at the one time. Have you had any interaction with them? And have you played soccer? I don't know between Mayo and Black Rock. Do you get to play soccer? Or all time you can do the show of one thing. I hate football. <laughs> so are you first. Uh, I'm not mad into the football, and we, we probably haven't crossed paths just quite yet. Um, no, we wish them all the best in their, their next game against Denmark, but um, I wouldn't be the mad. I'm a slight Spurs fan, but at the most, but I, w I wouldn't be huge into the football. Uh, I used to love football since Black Rock, it's kind of faded away. Uh, I used to play for Clal AFC back in the day, back in Mayo. Bit of a free kick taker at the left foot, but um, that wouldn't be, wouldn't be much use these days. I mean, do you expect to, to sort of bump into them in the car park or, 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 or would you like to bump into them in the car park? I mean, they are here. There's a great focus on our sport this weekend, Saturday, Thursday, Saturday. Yeah, it's cool all being in the same area. I think they're a little bit further yeah, away, so it's all right. Yeah, <laughs> well, we haven't come across them yet, <laughs> but yeah, I'd like Sheena said we wish them the best of luck as well. It's cool to be preparing for big games together. Thanks. Cheers. Uh, Caitlin, I want to just ask about Dan, his nomination. What have you seen from him, even in oh, he's been playing together for a few years now, but in the last twelve months since he came on in the international scene, what kind of growth have you seen? Um, yeah, quite a lot. I think from watching him. At twenties and stuff, he was always we played twenties together. So I've been playing for a while now, but he's always been capable of big moments and obviously a great athlete. So um, that's always been there. His whatever his runs and his footwork, but I think all the kind of smaller bits has grown quite a bit. Um, he's just become a lot more solid and developed in all areas from set piece, like scrummaging, to his defence. All those bits are coming together nicely as well. So. Um, this sort of solid base with all the extra stuff he's uh, capable of doing. So uh, yeah, himself and Ronan Keller. I'm I'm living with Ronan Keller, so I have to give him a shout out as well. But uh, yeah, two quality players and the other guys we have here as well. Uh, Dan, just going back to the, um, the French 19 World Cup. Obviously, World Cup is retired. Did you at any stage around that time sense there was maybe an opening for the national team and have ambitions to, to be the one to, to fill out the spot? I think always as a kid, I, I pictured myself playing for Ireland, but um, I'd say around that time I was focusing on making sure I was getting a, an academy contract. Um, I was playing 20s and didn't have an academy contract at that time. Um, so I, I think I did a good job trying to play it step by step. I knew that was the next, next step I had to take, so I focused purely on trying to, to impress an answer in my province. And then when that came about, it, it was about trying to get into the senior team. And you know, I did a good year of just like nailing the basics with Leinster and trying to trying to build myself up. Um, so from that from that aspect, I think it was it was making sure you don't get too far ahead of yourself. It's easy to, you know, if I was to be looking at an Irish jersey at that stage, it would, you'd be jumping a lot of people um, with no right to do so. I think it was step by step. Yeah, we just mentioned Ronan there. Obviously, Ronan came in, started very well, was a bit unfortunate with the injury. Given that you two are very similar age, did you feel like you might have to patient? Be patient given how well you did start in the, in the Yeah, no, Ronan's an unbelievable player. Um, we probably play quite similar at times, and and you know the, the way we've been able to work together, train together. He was he's he's the exact same age as me. Um, 
he was probably got a, a good head start. He he played a twenties a year above me, or like with the year above. Um, but you know, I think he's you know um, like the two of us have been able to push each other really hard. Um, you know, I'd like to say that the two of us wouldn't be here or at the standard we are if we didn't have each other because it's it is good com competition. But we are also best mates, and so uh, you know I'm glad that to have someone my age that I can bounce ideas off. Um, Who's, who's walking through the same door as me, basically. And just one final, going back to the start of the Six Nations this year, obviously you've not made a, a test start at that point. What did you, or how did you envisage this, this year going out? I'm sure you didn't imagine playing three games in New Zealand and beating the world champion as well, and that starts in all of us. Yeah, like we talk about in the squad all the time that, you know, it's, it's a squad effort. Um, you know, Faz would have always said you need to be, if you're first, second, third choice, fourth choice, you have to be ready. To step up within a week, um, you know, like we we talk about going into a World Cup, we're going to need a, probably a squad of 50 players for this season. You know, depending on injuries, it could it could go down to third, fourth, fifth choice. And um, so that's the sort of mindset I was in back then when I was probably on the bench, or like myself and Rob Herring were probably trying to battle it out for a spot on the bench. Um, was making sure I was ready to to step up if if needed. Um, then Roe went down and in, in the France game and. And from there on, you know, I, I felt comfortable. I, I felt like I'd, I'd done the work. I felt like I had the right to be there. Um, so I, it wasn't too um, scary, I suppose, or, you know, I didn't feel out of my depth. I felt very comfortable in the squad that I, that I had around me and, and the preparation that was put in.